Okay, let's do a quick unboxing of the Phantom 3 Pro that I just received here from uh, Multicopter Warehouse. I know there's a million different videos out there for uh, unboxing and they're really quite long and boring. So let's try to make this very quick. I don't know how entertaining we'll make it, but at least you get a quick review of what's going to be in this. Um, let me fast forward just a little bit here and break this thing down so you guys aren't sitting through a bunch of really boring crap. All right, let's try that again. It's kind of weird. My uh, GoPro 4 here just gave me an SD card error. I've never seen that before. But anyway, uh, here's a real quick rundown of what happens when you open the box. Um, not going to bore you all to death. Here is the unit taking this thing out. Uh, well, that's that's brilliant. That's the way they package that. Well, hopefully that's not going to be an issue. Okay, um, well, there's the unit itself. Battery's in there. We'll get that charged up so we can get this down the road. And up in the air, blades are in here. And this is the new controller. Very, very similar to the Inspire 1. Matter of fact, let me show you the Inspire 1 controller. The biggest difference between the two, if you notice, um, the Inspire 1 has the HDMI out and the Phantom 3 does not. We're going to try binding the the Inspire 1 um, extra remote that I have and we'll bind it to the to the Phantom 3 and we'll see how that works out and we'll try the uh, HDMI out on that. But uh, there you go in a nutshell guys. I'm not going to bore you to death with manuals and all this other crap that I've seen on YouTube with their videos. So I'm going to get this thing charged up and do a quick comparison and we'll uh, take a look at the differences between the Phantom 3 Pro and the Inspire 1. All right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Here we go. Just a quick note um, as I'm just a quick note guys on on uh, unpacking this thing. I was just noticing some of the packing job. I pull this box out. I wanted you to see this real quick. Okay, so that's this is the way it's packaged. Not a real big deal. Uh, let's see. Well, there's nothing damaged, of course. Everything looks fine. Yeah, let me check the accessory box here real quick. Box looks good. You should just have the rubber grommets. Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. You can see. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. You see the smushed rubber grommet, grommet that's right into the crease. It couldn't take two seconds to move that over. All right, well, hopefully everything else came out all right. I didn't like the way that this gimbal lock fell off. Hopefully that wasn't off in the box and we're, we're okay. So, all right, back to charging up this battery. Let's get this thing airborne. Okay, guys, here we are out here in sunny Southern California. You can see the wonderful cloud cover that we have here. Daylight is diminishing. So this should be a good true test of what this thing is gonna be like for GPS lock in pretty cloudy conditions. Uh, this video is just really doing this by the seat of my pants. Uh, we wanted to get the maiden voyage out of the way for this Phantom 3 Professional. This will be the first time it's going to be launched. I just spent the last hour or so doing the firmware updates, which took forever. And uh, like the Vision or like the uh, Phantom 1 and Phantom 2, it's it's a pain. Uh, but that's one of the things that helps you to stay locked on. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that your firmware is always updated. If you're looking for a drone that you can pull out of the box and just charge the batteries and launch, then DJI products are probably not the way you want to go. Um, a couple of different things that we'll talk about uh, is comparing this to the Inspire 1. I really hate to do that because we're talking about apples and oranges. This is not even close. I know that there's a whole bunch of comparisons on YouTube and a bunch of different blogs, people talking about why to get one or the other and they're just not even close um, if you're looking at cameras I can I can understand people trying to compare the different 4k aspects of the drones when you look at the Phantom 3 drone uh, camera in 4k versus the you know the inspires I, I totally get it but when you're looking at the capabilities of both drones it's it's not even close you know I was flying uh, yesterday or I think it was the day before yesterday and I was out just playing around um, 
we had it was really windy conditions and of course i had a tailwind behind me but i don't know if you can see this but that's with the tailwind behind me and the inspire was trucking along if you can see that it was tooling along at 65.2 miles an hour and that's a heck of a tailwind um yeah it's probably not the ideal conditions to be flying but uh the rotors didn't go flying off so you know that was impressive and i was out probably a good mile and a half away so um, you know looking at the different abilities of both drones you're really not even comparing the two and then one of the other things that we talked about earlier was the fact that the the phantom 3 does not have hdmi out so what that means is you cannot plug an hdmi external monitor to that transmitter where if you're dealing with the Inspire, you can hook up two controllers. You have one controller that is dedicated strictly for the drone, and the second one is dedicated strictly for the camera. I didn't bring the other remote since this is going to be a quick, uh, quick video, but you know the Inspire does have the capability, as you see on the back there, for HDMI out. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about for the, the new quick detach blades, this is kind of silly, but I'll just bring it up. If you notice, the DJI marked the blades for the quick detach so you can tell which one goes on which point by putting a white dot for the gray and black, obviously, for black. The new aftermarkets have nothing marked on there. I know it's really silly. You just have to look to find out which way to put it on, but when you're in a, in a time crunch situation, it's kind of a pain to sit there and try to figure out which one goes on which. Obviously... You can do what I did, just put a little mark on them, but you think that with the painted blades, they couldn't have just put a white dot on them, just like they did on these other ones, so you can tell which one goes on where. I, I don't understand that. So, without any further ado, and I'll shut up now, let's get this thing in the air and see how the maiden voyage goes. Okay, we're going to do something a little different. We're just going to launch it from here, do it totally autonomous. All right, she's up. All right, now I'm going to hand my controller over to my buddy here so he can handle the, the controller. And then um, let's take a look at it airborne. What you guys don't notice, what you guys don't notice is the wind. It's a little breezy out here but the flight characteristics very good so there you go okay one thing real quick that we just noticed the pilot app for both the Inspire and the Phantom 3 are different. Um, one of the things that we noticed, which is kind of a, an important thing, if you notice, this one here is hooked up to the Phantom 3. This one I have it hooked up to the Inspire remote. And you'll notice that the map application is over here on the right-hand side. You have the radar over here on the left. On the app for the pilot app for the Phantom 3, they have the map application. And then in order to get to the other you have to click on that and have it removed. Now, I don't understand. We can't move that over there. We've been trying to figure out how to move that from here to there um, like it is on the Inspire, and we haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, I, I don't know why they would do that because I think it's, it's a much cleaner look to put the map application over here on the bottom right and then having this radar, which I use every single time I fly, uh, over here on the left. But... On this, you have to actually physically click on that and then change it. I just don't understand the, the reasoning behind that. So, you know, it didn't, just doesn't make sense. I, I don't understand. So maybe somebody out there under, can tell me how to get that over there uh, by the time that this video is, is out on the channel. Uh, great, but so far we haven't been able to figure it out. And like I said, we're making this kind of by the seat of our pants. And uh, that's one of the most incredible things that I've seen why would you do that and make it different from the Inspire? Because it's just so much more, more, uh, more of an easier app to look at when you can see the map on one side 
and the radar on the left. So there you go, just one more thing that we found that was kind of interesting.